Good morning and welcome back to another video with Brooklyn. How are you this marvelous Monday morning? So it's winding down, you all. Christmas is Friday. I'm excited. We're going out of town, so that's going to be nice. So this morning, I am hoping and praying and believing that you were able to wake up healthy in your sound mind, happy. You know your family is, is, is happy and doing well. But if not, if you are not in that position, I pray. And I believe that God will restore everything back to your health, your strength, your happiness, your family's happiness, and give you the willingness to pursue life and live life abundantly as he has said and set in his will, okay? So with that being said, we're going to jump right into the video. For some reason, it seems like, I don't know how this happened, but I have been talking about po political situations for a while. And normally I don't even pay that any attention, but you know, for some reason, maybe it's because I'm older now, but I'm really, and it's more in my face and I'm more aware. So we're going to talk about Biden this morning. Okay. Now I did a video on, uh, Billy Graham's son. Okay. And, uh, you know, he had the sign on his podium, Trump and Pence. And I was saying that you shouldn't be in church pushing polit political situations in politics. And I, that's the same thing go for Joe and Kamala. They shouldn't be pushed in church either, okay? I want to clarify that. Democrats and Republicans, that should stay on the outside of the church, okay? So I wanted to get that out the way. But I was reading an article that Joe Biden went to the grave site to visit his grave site. He does this every year. He takes flowers to his first wife, his daughter, who died in a car wreck. Now, from what I read, he had his wife, his infant baby, an infant little girl, and his son was in a, a traumatic car accident. The wife and the infant were killed. The son survived, but later on in years, he died from cancer. So Joe Biden's first family was just wiped out. They were taken from him. Okay, this man still held strong and, and pursued life and, and, and became president. Okay, a lot of people couldn't stand up underneath that pressure. That is a time you always have sympathy for someone in that situation. It could have happened, it happened in 1972. It was in 1972. His wife, his infant baby, his infant daughter, and his son was in a horrific car wreck where he lost his wife and his baby. Okay, the son survived, later on died from cancer, okay? And that's something that when you hear that, you have sympathy from that point up until your current point. You just have sympathy for a person. You're a human being, he's a human being. He suffered a great loss. So he went to put flowers on the grave of his family, you know, recently. And people were taunting and picking at this man. Because he won the election. Now, I remember when people were making comments about Trump's son that he has by Melania. They were saying that he had, you know, I'm not going to say what they said. But they was calling him all kind of names, this little boy. He has nothing to do with his daddy's behavior. But they talked about him, ridiculed that boy, talked about Trump and how his son was and blah, blah, blah. Some had, Trump, some, Trump had a fit. He went on social media and blasted everybody by talking about his, his kid, okay? Biden has not said a word. People have been saying that he was going to the graves yard to dig up votes. People have been saying just the cruel, nasty things that they don't know why he's going to the graveyard. He had an affair on his wife when she was living. You know, that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. God forgave him if he asked for forgiveness, and his wife, I'm sure, forgave him. We don't even know if that's true. But how many of them that's throwing accusations at him have had affairs? You know? So they're throwing up things about his past, you know, and laughing at him, and just, just nasty things, you know? And just nasty things. I can't even remember exactly what they said, but it was just nasty things. He's digging up votes. He's looking for the dead to give him votes, you know. He's going out there to thank the dead people for voting for him. Just a lot of nasty things, you know, besides accusing him of having an affair. And what I'm trying to say is this. 
These same people who are making these remarks, they don't realize the consequences that they are going to suffer because these are people who say they are Christians. You know, these are people who say that God put Trump in the White House and that they are Christians. OK, where is it in the Bible that God has ever taunted anyone and picked anyone? When? I want to know that scripture. What kind of Christians are these? I wouldn't go to near one of these churches and could not one of them talk to me about Jesus Christ and, and God, the Father. No one, of, not one of them. They are picking at this man's dead family. You know, they are taunting him because he won an election. That wasn't in his control. He didn't know what the vote was going to be. He did not steal any votes. People voted for him honestly. They can't find anything. You know? And I want to say this. When you taunt people and you bully people, you harass people and try to break them down, there's pros to it at the time and there's cons to it. So I'm going to say some of the pros and I'm going to go to the cons. The pros is it makes the person that's taunting and bullying you feel big about themselves. The con is they're not. They're little. They're beneath you. Pro number two, the person who's picking and taunting and ridicule, ridiculing you and just harassing you, it makes them feel like they have high self-esteem. They're on top of the mountain at that particular time because the focus is off of them and it's on you. Con is not. Their self-esteem is low under your shoe. They have no self-esteem and they feel bad about themselves. So they take the focus off of themselves and put it on you. Pro number three, you're leading. Most people that taunt and pick, they are leaders in that particular moment. Okay, in that particular moment. Con number three, you're not a leader. You're a follower. Because at that particular time, you think you're leading, but actually you're following. Because you're doing what everybody else is doing. You think you're a leader. You think you have people following you. They think the same thing. They think the same thing. Pro number four, it makes you feel good. You're laughing. It's funny. It's just tickling you pink. Everybody's laughing at your jokes. They're laughing at all of this. You know, it's just having a good time. But on the con side... When you are by yourself, you're not laughing. It's not funny. If someone did that to you, then it wouldn't be funny. It wouldn't be hilarious. It wouldn't be ha-ha and hee hee -ing. Okay? Con Pro number five, they don't think God sees them. They think God's eyes are closed. They think he's sleeping. These are Christian people that evidently don't know the Bible. They think that he's sleeping. That he doesn't see them. But con number five is you reap just what you sow. The word of God says whatever a man soweth, that is what he will reap. And it's normally worse than when you sowed it. If you sow, I like I don't like beets, but I love pineapple. If I sow a beet, I'm going to get millions of beets. I'm not going to sow a beet and get a pineapple, something I like. So when you sow discord, hurt, humiliation, all kinds of things, when you're bullying people, you are going to get the same thing back. That's the con from your pro. Thinking God don't see you, you're never going to reap it. He, he's blind to your behavior. You are going to reap everything that you sow. Now, these people that are picking at him and his loss, when their husband die or their wife die, their children die, their grandparents die, their grandchildren die, and somebody ridicules them, how would they feel? They won't think it's so grand then, then they'll be hollering, you're not a Christian, how can you do that to me? You're not a human being. Whatever you sow, you will reap the exact same thing and it will hurt you worse than what you put out. That's the purpose of reaping. There's always a consequence to your behavior. 
I cannot believe that people actually took the social media and picked at this man because he won the election, picked at his laws. It happened in 72. Trump's brother just died a few months ago. No one has said anything about his brother's death. No one has picked at his brother, his family's death. Because that's something, that's a place that you don't go. You don't go there. You know, this man lost an infant and a wife. And they are picking at him, going to put flowers on, his gra on their grave. They were picking at this man, going to visit his family. How many of you all out there still go visit the grave site of your mother and your father, your children, your grandchildren, your aunts, your uncles? How many? Would any one of you all want someone to pick at you like that on social media or just in just in general? These are cruel people. And this is who are voting for Trump. And this is the same personality that Trump has. Okay? Trump could stop a lot of this just speaking out. He denies speaking out because he wanted to continue. All he has to do is speak out. They following him. It's a call. They will stop this behavior if he spoke out. He refuses to speak out because he wants it to happen. He likes it. He likes it. Who does that? Saying he's going to the graveyard to get votes and he's down there thanking, forget, thanking the dead for giving him votes and why he going to give the, the flowers at the grave. They dead already. Just nasty things. I read the article. I can't remember everything they say. I don't remember, want to remember. But it was just nasty to even say anything like that. I don't care whose side you're on. You should still have sympathy for someone. This man has not struck back. He has not said nothing. I know that hurt him. I know it hurt him to the core. You don't do things like that. This world has just become, it was already wicked. But this world has it's, it's just become wicked a thousand times more since Trump has been in office. He's condoning this behavior. He was set in office to expose all of this ratchet behavior, this hate, this racism. You know, he was in this disrespect of people. He was set in office, I believe, by God to expose that because he was the one who could do it. Because all the other presidents that we had during our lifetime. Okay, a lot of this was going on, but they spoke out against it, even though they may have been, you know, Republicans and they was right along with the behavior. A lot of them spoke out against it. You know, Trump don't speak out against it. He allows it. He pushes it. So it was able to come out more from the cracks and the crevices and from people's hearts and deep down in their spirit, how they feel really felt about other people. You know, now if Trump had a one, None of this would be going on. The, we, the people that lost to Trump the first time, none of this happened. None of this happened. Everybody just took the L and they went about their business. They took the loss and they went about their business and they dealt with it for four years. Now Trump and his goons can't deal with it. They have actually resorted to communicating threats of the Democrats, threatening to kill people's families, anybody Republican that has turned they are threatening them, threatening just citizens, just civilians. And now they have stupid as low as to go to the graveyard and picking him for going to the graveyard to mourn his family loss. He's married again, but he loved his family. That was his wife and his baby. Then he turned around and lost his son to cancer. They're picking at this man's the death of his family. That's just monsters. These are monsters. That's the only thing I can say. These are not human beings. These are demons that are in, that are in human form. Because anyone in their right mind, a psychopath. That's that's who would do that. A psychopath, a crazy person. But if you're in your right mind, you wouldn't do stuff like that. Even if you're not a religious person, just having sympathy. God gave everyone sympathy and compassion. Just having sympathy for people. You don't have to be religious to have sympathy. But like I said, Muslims, 
Buddhas, Buddhism, Jewish people, other religions, you don't see them behaving this way. But when it comes to Christianity, they are the worst type. I'm sorry. They are the worst type. They are always starting trouble. They are always bullying people. They lie all the time. They steal and they cheat. That's why they can't get anyone to come to Christ and follow Christ. Because real people who want to really, really do right, when they look at this behavior, they don't want to follow Christ. They don't want to live for God and do, if they're going to, real people that really, really honestly want to do the right thing. Because you, you don't, people don't have to tell you that's wrong. You know right from wrong from the time you're an infant, a little baby. Walking around one or two years old, you're learning right from wrong. These are grown folk. But when it turned on them because it's coming, when you start reaping it and it's coming, then they're going to think back on what they did because everything, every time you do something, it comes to remembrance. I know this girl, we're associates. She loves married men. She's never been married before. Everybody that she gets, that she dates, they're single. They won't marry her. She has been left. They marry other people. Blah, blah, blah. And she has said to me, well, I know that I'm going to read. Because she's in the church now. She wasn't in the church. But she has done this and slept with married men while in the church. While in the church. She was going with another woman's husband while in the church. He, of course, stayed with his wife. She moved the man in. He went back to his wife. This is a Christian, okay? I told her, you're going to reap everything that you're sowing. You can't do stuff like that, claiming to be a Christian. She looked at me square in the eyes and said, well, I don't want nobody to see with my husband, so I guess I'll never get married because I'm, I'm not going to reap that, so I just won't get married. That's your reaping. Because then she turns around and says, I've never been married. I would sure like to get married. When you get married... You will reap it. Someone will sleep with your husband time and time again because you reap what you sow. But everyone that she has messed with has cheated on her anyway. And then she's crying about it. But you're sleeping with other women's husbands. You reap what you sow. You can't get away from it. She made the comment thinking that she can escape it. I just don't get married. Well, nobody's asking you to get married because that's your consequence. But while you're sleeping with these married men, and these boyfriends, they're cheating on you and going back to their wives. That's your consequence. And it hurts. You reap exactly what you sow. You know? So with that being said, I'm going to say Phil Donke. Let's thank you very much in German. So Phil Donke for watching me. And choose, that's what? That's by in German.